Hey guys, so um, today I am going to do a uh, recorded lecture over chapter two. Um, so bear with me here. I'm going to start presenting and hopefully it won't be too long. It's kind of dry, not going to lie, um, but I'll try to make it interesting, as interesting as I can. So, because we're going to be talking about insurance and stuff like that, which to be honest is kind of important. Um, I didn't know anything about insurance until I was like, you know, in college and beyond. And I had like when I first got my first career and I was out of um, high, out of college. Well, yeah, did I get, yeah, it was when I was out of college. Um, and I was like having to pick, you know, like insurance stuff. And I knew nothing about insurance at all. So you'll be ahead of the game if you know about this stuff. This is like life skills. So it's kind of boring, but I think it's important. Okay, so we are going to, wait, I am presenting, yes, okay, let's see, slideshow, okay, so understanding healthcare systems, this is chapter two, um, sorry, this is, this PowerPoint's a little dry, it doesn't have a lot of pictures and stuff, I didn't make it, so we're just going with it, um, okay, so that's the objectives here. Okay, so types of healthcare providers. Um, there are several facilities and agencies that provide medical care. Um, and if you read chapter two or read through it, you would see the all different kinds. Um, some may be familiar, but some may be new to you. Um, some, oh, some ones that you might know, general hospitals, specialty hospitals, um, even primary care doctors. So, you know, a lot of times you think of hospitals as being like the only things, but, you know, if you think about, um, your primary care doctor that you go to, like a pediatrician, um, you know, a specialty hospital might be considered something like an urgent care. If you go to um, like an urgent care center for an emergency, but it's not something like life or death. And then a lot of times emergency, uh, emergency um, rooms in the hospital, um, those are for like more serious things. Um, okay. Government agencies. So you've got the World Health Organization was established in 1948 and concerned with world health problems. Um, then you've got the Veterans uh, Administration Hospitals that are federally funded. This is for the United States and serves people who have been uh, in the armed forces. Um, you may have heard of the VA um, and some people haven't heard of it at all if you're not really involved in um, like if you don't have a family member that's been in the military. My husband was in the military, and so I kind of learned some things when I got to know him and was, was dating him and got married. Um, he doesn't use the VA system because it kind of sucks, to be honest. Um, so he, you know, has insurance through his work that he uses, but, you know, supposedly they're supposed to have good health benefits or health, um, you know, even mental health ben benefits through the VA I think they've gotten better. My husband was in like 15 years ago, so it's probably gotten better in the last 15 years, but um, it still has kind of a reputation for not being that great. Um, and then we've got not-for-profit agencies. So these are things that, uh, agencies that um, run off of, um, um, usually not off government funds, but donations, but sometimes they can get government funds, um, but it's not-for-profit. Although I will say these not-for-profit companies have very large margins. You know, they have people that work for them um, that make high salaries. And so, you know, I'm not the biggest proponent of these kind of agencies. Some of them, I think, are kind of, um, what's the word, like a racket, if that makes sense. Um, or like they, you know, they're, they've come out recently in recent years and said like some of these big you know agencies only give like two percent of their funds to actually helping you know victims of you know heart disease or diabetes or whatever it is and the rest of it goes to paying for the people that work there um you know their salaries and things like that so i don't know i'm not like a huge proponent of them i don't give to most of them because of that because I don't know where the funds are going. I would rather give my funds to a research, um, like to, to research directly or to 
um, you know, people directly, like smaller agencies that are giving to people in the community, stuff like that, I would rather give my money to than big ones because, you know, even though they're not for profit, they still kind of are, if that makes sense. Okay, so managed care, quality care and managed cost. So managed care is a healthcare plan or system that seeks to control medical costs by contracting with a network of providers and by requiring pre-authorization for visits to specialists. This can be for preventative care, primary care, specialty care, and emergency care. And um, this can be like, like an overarching um, uh, name for certain insurances. Healthcare regulatory agencies, uh, managed care, a healthcare planner system, that's pretty much the same thing. Okay, um, organizations, see organization chart on pages 34 and 35. Most common organizational structure in healthcare is the pyramid structure. An organizational chart establishes a chain of command and bypassing a link in the chain of command causes misunderstandings and is unprofessional. This is basically like a really small version of probably a lot in the chapter that talks about just how organizations are run. Um, it's kind of a little bit too simplistic, I think, on this. I don't think they go into it. Yeah, they don't really go into it a whole lot, but... Um, I guess that's basically what they wanted you to know out of that was just that there's organizational charts and chain of command. And if you bypass the chain of command, then it can be unprofessional and misunderstandings can happen. Um, if we were in class, I'd talk a little bit about, you know, how that could happen and um, ask you guys, like, what do you think uh, that means? Or, you know, how could uh, a bypass in a link in the chain cause misunderstandings and be unprofessional. Like I'd want examples from you guys. Um, I'm trying to think of an example myself of a, like a chain of command. I mean, it probably would be someone, you know, above or below someone that, you know, breaks the rule or something and then, you know, messes up um, like they didn't do what their supervisor wanted them to do something like that. Anyway, um, healthcare regulatory agencies, state and federal regulatory agencies for the healthcare industry set standards for healthcare, keep healthcare workers informed, monitor facilities and workers' compliance with laws that pertain to healthcare. Um, with this, I would say I, this isn't added in here, but like some of examples of this would be like the Food and Drug Administ Administration, the FDA, um, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare. Um, I'm trying to think of some others, even like the DEA is a drug enforcement agency. Um, all of those, we talk a lot about that in farm tech, but a lot of those, um, are regulatory agencies that are government run and they basically try to protect the health or the health of the, of, you know, people like us, especially like the FDA. If you think about the, uh, what they do, they actually regulate manufacturers. So it makes sure that, um, bad drugs don't come on the market, like like legal drugs, you know, that go through and that they basically have all these manufacturing practices in place for these manufacturers that say, hey, you have to make good drugs, um, effic efficacious drugs, which means they work, effective drugs, um, and you need to make sure that they're, you know, quality. So that's why, you know, here in America, we have it pretty good with a, a regulatory agency like that, that makes sure that bad drugs aren't coming on the market that are not going to work or that, you know, are going to hurt you or something like that. Because if you go to China or somewhere like that, you don't know what's in those drugs. They may not work. Um, there's just not regulatory agencies like that in places like China. And, you know, that's why we're trying to keep China out of you know, as much of, as we can of our, you know, manufacturing practices. And it's better to bring it back home to America because um, you really can't regulate another foreign country what they send to you. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Okay. So quality health care costs, cost containment, what drives up the price of health care? Um, lawsuits, aging population, technological advances in the medical field, all these things continually drive up healthcare um, and make it pretty costly to go to the doctor. Um, so health insurance or third-party payers are supposed to help with that. Um, the Affordable Care Act 
um, or Obamacare, remember that, kind of made it more accessible for everybody to get health care. Um, we're also seeing, though, that it drove up health care costs a lot, um, which kind of sucks, but everybody can get health care now, so it's like a balance. Because basically what they wanted to push in that act was that you couldn't um, say no, like the, those big companies couldn't deny you coverage because of a pre-existing condition. And let's face it, here in America, a lot of people have pre-existing conditions. What are pre-existing conditions? Well, things like um, diabetes, uh, heart disease, you know, things like that that are pretty common in the, um, I wouldn't say elderly population because some people are, young people are getting this, these things now too. And so what happened was these um, health insurance companies were like, well, you know, now that we're having to cover all these people that, you know, are sickly, um, we're going to drive the cost up more. So for example, um, I'll give you, oh, here's a good example of this. Okay. So my husband had really good insurance with his last job. And basically we paid a little bit every month for our insurance. And then, um, we had a deductible every year. It was like $400 that we had to meet. And then once we met that deductible, so once we paid $400, um, towards like healthcare costs, if we went to the doctor or whatever, um, then they, the health insurance company would pay 80% of our medical bills and then we would pay 20%. So, um, it was a pretty good thing. We still paid a ton of money for having a baby cause that's really expensive. Um, but it was overall a pretty good plan. So then we got on this new plan. Um, it's a newer plan in general at my husband's new job and the deductible is, uh, $4,000 per person instead of $400 per person. So if you see that difference, it's a huge difference. And so they don't pay anything until we pay $4,000. It's really crappy insurance. Like, can you even believe, like, like I'm never going to spend $4,000 on medical bills pretty much, I mean, until I have the baby, my next baby, my next baby. So it's going to, it's like almost not even worth it to have the insurance because it's so expensive. Um, and I went to the doctor the other day and I asked him, like, why is this so expensive? And they said, well, because we're seeing this more and more. These health insurances are just going up so much in their costs because they can't stay open because they have to, you know, uh, they have to pay for all these people that have pre-existing conditions that do, you know, have constant medical care and cost them a lot of money. So that really sucks. Um, that's just an example there. Um, and then things, uh, part of, uh, some of these, um, I guess key terms, I think that were in your chapter two key terms were things like co-payments, deduct deductibles, co-insurance. Um, so co-payments are things that you're going to pay for out of pocket when you go to the doctor. So you're going to have like a co-pay or co-payment. So when you go in, um, you know, it might say, well, you know, we're going to pay, um, 80% of your, of your pay, of your cost to go to the doctor today. So your out of pocket copay would be $20, right? And so then they would pay um, maybe 80% of it and pay uh, $80. So that's something like a copay. Oh, sorry, I got to sneeze you guys. <clears throat> oh, sorry. And then you've got deductibles. So a deductible is something that you have to pay um, usually up front or before they'll start paying something. And again, it can range wildly from anywhere from maybe $400, which is what my last one was, to thousands of dollars. So um, pretty expensive. And then uh, coinsurance is the um, percentage that you're gonna pay um, based on your plan. Um, and then you've got HMOs, PPOs, Medicare, Medicaid, tri Medicaid TRICARE, workers' compensation. These are all third-party payers. Sorry, this, this uh, slide is really confusing, but um, third-party payers are um, things like uh, uh, their insurances. So you've got HMOs, PPOs, and then you have um, government insurances, which are Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE, okay? And then workers' compensation um, is if you get hurt on the job, your work will pay for you for all your medical bills. So HMOs are private insurances, or well, HMOs and PPOs are private insurances. These three here are going to be um, 
public, I would say, or um, if you qualify based on income and um, your situation, if you're a child or whatever, um, or your old children uh, usually have Medicaid or pregnant women, and then Medicare is older people, um, and then TRICARE is for uh, military. So these three are going to be, um, uh, they're going to be your... Um, uh, um, United States health care that you get through um, the government. And then again, workers' comp is through your company. And let's go to the assignment. So um, what you're going to do, you're going to look at an insurance card, okay? And it can be yours or a family member's, or you can Google one as an example, but I'd rather you use yours so you have it right in front of you um, or family member's. And you're going to create a Google Doc and answer the following questions. So you're just basically going to go through and look at this and find the information on there. Um, and it's kind of just a, to get you familiarized with these numbers and everything on your card. Um, so I put mine on here. I tried to, um, to, to X out or whatever these, uh, my... Uh, numbers just because this is going to be on YouTube for a little bit um, but I don't think anyone's gonna find this information so <laughs> um, but this is what mine looks like okay so my husband works for Textron um, and then he has United Healthcare so we're under him so Clayton is my husband he is the main member and then dependents mean the people underneath him which is me and then my son or our son, Lincoln. Um, and then we've got a member ID number. So the member ID number is actually um, like a number specific to us. The group number is what kind of plan we chose in this company, okay? Um, and then you have um, HSA says, it says HSA here because we have a health savings account. Um, but it's, I don't really know if it's through them. So, and then we have a payer ID, which is how, um, if they, if the doctor is looking for a, um, a, a, a way to get paid, they get paid through this payer ID. And then on the back of the card, you'll see some numbers. So this is for members. That's us. That's my husband and I. Um, if we have information, if we want information, we can go to, we can call this number. But then what's also important is that your provider, or if you work for a provider, if you are a provider one day, like you're a doctor, or a nurse, whoever, and you're working with ben insurance benefits, they may want you to call and um, look up insurance benefits. And that's why they have this for provider. And then that's the web, the, um, their physical address for medical claims. Most of the time it's done online, but anyway, so this is just an example of a card, okay? And I think that's it. So go to today's lesson, and you guys can um, get on there and do the, um, let me get off of here real quick. You can do the assignment for today, and then we're going to have another assignment on Thursday um, with this stuff as well. So um, you will be using this in the, the chapter two um, as well. Okay, you guys, um, I hope this wasn't too boring and I kind of brought some interesting information to it. I will talk to y'all later.